And welcome to Hannity, and we're coming to you live from Saratoga Springs. We're in beautiful upstate New York. It is just eight days. Hello, hi, welcome. Right. In eight days, voters from this state will head to the polls and help decide who they want to be the 2016 presidential nominee. 95 Republican delegates up for grabs, and tonight, GOP presidential candidate. He's the governor of the great state of Ohio, a good friend for the entire hour. John Kasich is with us. How are you? How are you? Good. All right. Standing room only. There's like a million people standing behind there. Oh, yeah. All around the room. Yeah. Yeah. I saw you had 4,000 people in Rochester. Something happening that maybe we're not aware of? Well, for the first time in about the last month, they actually know my name is John Kasich and not <laughs> governor of, New of Ohio because uh, we didn't get any attention before, did we? But now we're starting to get it and people are hearing the message and they're showing up. <laughs> you know what, Sean, honestly, it is, uh, it is really amazing. It, it's an amazing experience to go through this. And um, I wasn't going to tell this story, but maybe I will. I was in, in Greece, New York, and people were waiting outside in line. I mean, I can't believe it, right? It's by the grace of God that I've been given a chance to do these things. And there was a group of disabled folks, and they were screaming at me and disrupting. And the people started getting upset, and I said, don't get upset. These folks have lived in the shadows for, you know, 100 years, and they need attention. And they screamed a little bit more, and then this, the whole thing ended. And somebody on my staff said, they're still in the gym. So I went in to see them. There were three of them, and they were, they were very severely disabled. And uh, they said, we came at 7 in the morning. They stuck us in the back. And I said, well, look, you know, I'm helping you because, frankly, the Lord wants me to help you. And I said, well, we'll take a picture, and I'm going to have my head of the whole... Uh, whole operation in Ohio call you to see if there's some other things we can be doing because it's been a high priority and then as I was leaving this young lady young girl she was 17 I didn't know how old she was she said can I take a picture with you and I said yeah yeah you can take a picture and she started shaking and crying you scare some people no, well, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. no I mean this is really amazing and she I said to her what's wrong young lady she said I never thought that I would have a chance to meet you. And I put my arm around her shoulder and I said, listen, so much of this is about celebrity in life. You don't really know me. And you get No, but I, I, I just, you, you and I, Sean and I have known each other for a very long time. And Sean's been, you know, he's had groups like this all over the country. I, I, I've seen it happen. And Sean, you and I, you know, my dad carried mail. Your dad was a, was a uh, police officer. Oh, he's, a, he's a probation. Probation officer. I lived in probation I my mean, whole life. Yeah. You know, <laughs> well, you know, you look. shake or shake The 46 million 
lives. Real Americans, real families, our friends, our neighbors, really suffering. And to add one point, government's hurting them. Government's not helping them. And we now have doubled our debt. We now have 120 trillion in unfunded liabilities. And I worry if America's in such a decline, if we can fix it. Negative? the economy. their job. I'm sure you always cut taxes for people and for companies so they can employ more people. And thirdly, let's have some common sense and let's balance a budget. So you now you go to the doctor. Yeah, those are the three things. So you go to the doctor and you say, and the doctor says, I say, well, I'm not feeling very well. He says, well, what are you doing? I said, well, we, ha we are regulating businesses out of existence. We're raising taxes on everything that is happening in this country. And finally, we've blown up the budget. Wonder why you're not feeling well. There is a formula that works. I did it in Washington. As you know, I've done it in Ohio. Put a team together, throw out all the goofy politics, focus on the problem, and go fix it. That's all you got to do. When you, you did leave a, what? $5 trillion. trillion dollar surplus. What was the deficit that you conquered? Because I, oh, I, I mean, it was real. I don't, I don't have that number in front of me, but it yeah. was, you know, giant. We paid down a half a trillion of the, of the national, national debt. debt. Right. And we had four years of a balanced budget. But you know what happened? And this is the thing that burns you up. I left Washington. We had a projected $5 trillion surplus. It could have, pr pr could have provided private accounts for young people in addition to Social Security. And it was the House Republicans, the, House, the Senate Republicans, and the President spent it, and the Republican President spent it all. The difference between Republicans and Democrats, Democrats love to spend, so do Republicans. Republicans just feel guilty when they do it. Yeah. And that's why, that's why you have to, Sean, you gotta have hey. somebody that stands in the breach and says, we gotta remember all the people, you, not the special interest you know, of so angry at you. Republicans. John Boehner was speaker. He had the power of the purse. I've read the Constitution, and they wouldn't use it to balance the budget. And the debt went up four point some odd trillion dollars with the Republican Speaker in a Republican House. They didn't keep their promise. They didn't stop or Obamacare or defund it. And then they went ahead with the executive amnesty, and they ended up funding that when they ran in 2014 and said they wouldn't. Well, I don't think that anybody should make a promise when they run for office that they don't legitimately think they can keep. Because, and that's what happens all the time. You know what? A lot of people in this country, when they saw me in the debates, I would talk about my record in Washington, my record in Ohio, and people would say, why do you keep talking about that? I'll tell you why. Today, if a politician's lips are moving, we believe they're lying. So the reason why I talk about what I've done is if I tell you I have done it before, then I have credibility to tell you what I'm going to do because of this. You know, I'm a citizen too. People want my vote. When they come to see me, they say, oh, I want to be this, I want to be that. I said, what have you done? I don't, want to, I don't want to hear about all these great things you're going to do. How can I believe you? What have you ever done in your life that convinces me that what you tell me is true? And so that's why I talk about it. I want to just say this to, to everybody here. Look, I know we're worried about the security of our job. I know we're worried our kids got education. They're still living at home. I know, I understand all of that. This can all be fixed if we work as Americans, if, we, if we're able to enact conservative ideas and bring the country together, Sean. Look, when we balanced the budget, when I, when I, I left Washington you know, with Senator Domenici, we had enormous job growth, wage growth, no discussion on income inequality, and bet you an economy when she runs an economy when she runs. Two paths. Give us a preview. Well, look, you can, <clears throat> I've learned this when I was actually in New Hampshire. I can come in here and talk about all of our problems, 
and I can drive them right into the ditch, or, and I can make them angry, I can get them to be divided, polarized, and I can turn anger into things or I can manage all these problems. You just medicine, life expectancy, transportation, we are just we, we just are dominating the world. Now we're drifting. We can fix it. And we don't want to be saying America's worst days are behind us. Look, you do a good job when you are realistic, not pie in the sky, and you can convince people that if we can shed the nonsense, of course we can climb out of this. We've had a lot worse times than what we have right now. I, the problem, well, I, from my vantage point, is I don't see the political will to get it done. Another, I'll give you one example. I agree with that. How about, for example, we have illegal immigration. Republicans have said they're going to build a fence. Democrats, they don't want to build a fence because they want a constituency. Republicans want cheap labor. Mm -hmm. And there's no fence built, which means not only can people come here that want a better life and jobs, but so can ISIS. They have failed the American people on simple, basic tasks. Well, look. By the um, way, you didn't give us a preview of the speech, so I have to go back to that. Well, that's a, that's a little, I mean, it's going to be... A humdinger, I believe. But here's what I wanted. Here's, but it's going to be clear. But here's what I wanted you to know. We reform welfare. Had to get the Democrats to go along. Right. We balanced the budget, which is a, one of the hardest things to do because everybody wants to, to spend. And we got that done. In Ohio, we went from way in the hole to, to now we're running surpluses. We're up 400,000 plus jobs. You see, Sean, you can't really lead from the House and the Senate. You can try. You, Newt found out you couldn't do it. You got a lead from the White House. And let me just tell you this. We will freeze all federal regulations for one year except for health and safety. We'll unwind the regulations we have. We will force the Congress to vote on regulations coming out of the bureaucracy in excess of $100 million. We're going to reduce the corporate taxes to 25%. We're going to bring the profits back from Europe because we're not going to double tax them. We're going to simplify the tax code and lower the taxes. We will have a path to balancing a budget. We'll move welfare, education, infrastructure, job training out of Washington. We will fix Social Security. We will secure the border and have a path to legalization and never citizenship. And then we will tell the world that we are, in fact, the leader of the world. And I promise you, I will have a plan to Congress within the first hundred days that we'll do all of that. Every little bit of it. We're just getting started as we continue with Ohio Governor John Casey. He'll be with us for the entire hour tonight. And later, members of the audience will have a chance to ask the governor on some of their questions. It's Hannity on the road in Saratoga Springs in beautiful New York as we continue. Welcome back to Hannity. We're on the road. We're in Saratoga Springs in New York for the hour. We have Ohio Governor John Casey with us. He's the guest. Ask you. But you. But you think we've been we're, we, the 9 11, we've had great challenges as a country, and we've overcome it, but I've never seen a time where Americans are so divided. They are, but you know, I think, Sean, it gets to be about realistic solutions, a record that shows you can do it. But here's the other thing you have to show people in the other party respect. You can't trash them. It's like. We had the President of the United States do exactly. We had the President of the United States do exactly. The state.
You don't, this is, this is America. We're not a parliamentary system. So I was with the Democrats last week and I made a state of the state and I asked the, the Senate leader, I said, what do you want? I said, don't give me crazy stuff, but tell me what you want. He gave me a couple things. I said, I'm not going to do that, but I can do that and I can do this and I can do that. And no, no, we're not going to do that. And so what you have to do is you have to respect people in the other to agree conservative Democrats said other to agree themselves. How do you deal with that? Because that's what they're going to do to you, and you're saying you got to get along with them. Smile. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, look, I got the guys in my own party doing it to me yeah, right that's now. True. Okay, no, I mean, the thing is, you want to answer the charges, and uh, but you got to show the way. And look, this is stuff they did to Reagan. Remember, they said he was a, a great D actor. He didn't just keep going with your stuff, one foot in front of the other. And you have to expect these kinds of things. But over time, you have to get people to respect one another. Remember, when Reagan was president, the Republicans didn't control the House. So he was able to get Phil Graham, who was a Democrat at the time, and they came together. Here's, here's what, uh, what I think we need to do. Let's just take Social Security. You're going to have to tell Republicans and Democrats, we're going to stop screwing around with this. We're putting, we're sacrificing our kids' future and we're hurting grandma. We've got to not stop doing it. And you've got to put a coalition but they together. Already, they already stole the money. It's gone. It's not in a lockbox. We, we, no, there's, that, I know that. But you, you know what? There is a way to fix Social Security, and I'll tell you what it is. If you've had higher income throughout your lifetime, you will get Social Security, you will get less. For those that totally depend on it, they will get what they need. That's the answer to it. It's not that complicated. So you're going to means test it, yeah. raise the retirement age. I don't have to raise the retirement age. Just by means testing, I can get it done. But here, here's the thing. If the Republicans say they want to do it and the Democrats are going to demagogue, you'll never get it done, and vice versa. So you have to be able to pull t people together, reasonable people. And one person once said about me is, John, your greatest gift is you can get people to do what they know they need to do, but they don't want to do. Okay? You can you get... So you're going to get everybody to eat salad and work out? Oh, no, no. Oh. What, I'm, what yeah. I'm saying is we can, we can solve these political problems, but the problem is the war goes on. And there were so many times I had to appeal to people in my own party and the other party. We have to remember our legacy is building, not tearing down, Sean. That's, you, you, I think you can get this done. You mentioned. I wouldn't run if I couldn't get it done. Why would I do this? You mentioned in the last segment, you know, this is what the Lord wants us to do. And I know you to be a guy of, of deep faith. Um, what does that mean in terms of how that inspires you? In other words, some people might take that as redistribute the wealth. That's not what you believe in. No, you believe no, in no, freedom no. and responsibility. No, what I'm saying is you see three people who, except for the grace of God, go I, who are sitting in wheelchairs, some that can barely move to even move the handles. Now, you don't have to be a believer. You can be somebody who's not a believer and still look. And We can't let them be in the shadows. We can't ignore them. That's not right. They're, everybody's made in the image of the Lord. Give them a chance. Give them a chance to rise. That's all. Now, how did we ever, yeah. how did we ever think? Seriously, Sean, look, my mother said it's a sin not to help people who need help, but it's equally a sin to continue to help people who need to learn how to help themselves. But in the context of that, look, to me, if you take the mentally ill, I would rather give them some help, get them on medication, and let them stand independent on their own two feet than have them live sleeping under a bridge or living in a prison. Now, where did it ever get to be about liberal? I didn't, I, I'm just, I'm no, asking I'm saying to you, no, we don't want to redistribute. Me. I didn't say that. No, I said liberals. No, no, no but, I, but people say no. that. Yeah. Look, redistribution of wealth is just dead wrong. The free enterprise system works. Mm -hmm. But to quote a great Catholic theologian, Michael Novak, mm -hmm. a, a free enterprise system that's not underlaid by a decent set of values is right. bankrupt. That's not liberal. That's common sense. It's conservative. And it's right. we got to take a break. We'll come back. More with Governor Kasich. We're in Saratoga Springs, New York. As Hannity on the road continues straight ahead. You can get this nomination.
is in a contested convention. That bothers some people, some yeah. of your opponents. I want to give you a chance to explain how you yeah. get the nomination. You know, I'm not, I'm not comparing myself, but that's what they told Lincoln when he, when he was going to that. <laughs> he got it on the Let me. And let me read convention, you start to now assume a certain weight and a heaviness on your shoulder that you didn't have before you got there. I saw it in 76, because I worked at that convention for, for Governor Reagan. And what they're going to do is they're going to look at two things. Who can beat Hillary? And I hate to say this, but I'm the only one who consistently Why beats do you her hate in that? every That's single a... poll. All right. Shouldn't hate to say that. They're going, they're going to think about who can be president. So what's incumbent on us? We're going to have to go to all these delegations. And look, the Trump people, they're for Trump. They're for me. They're sec I'm second. I mean, I, I understand them. So, you know, it's going to be incumbent on us to go and visit the delegations. Would you ever team up with them? No, I'm not teaming up with anybody. <laughs> Let me ask this question, because here's, this is the tough question. Yeah. Ask whatever. If Trump or Cruz win more states, have millions of more votes, have a lot more, hundreds of more delegates than you yeah. do, and you leapfrog over them through a contested convention, don't you think, you talked about uniting the party, yeah. don't you think Cruz and Trump supporters are going to be pretty pissed off? Well, it, it, no, because, you know, first of all, a lot of them that will go as delegates, they're there for a variety I of mean, different I mean, the people reasons. that voted, the okay. people that... Well, look, here's the thing. Your daughter got a B-. minus. Now, here's why. We had to tell the whole world. Here's the, here's the she thing. She mostly got A's, you no, know. No, she got a lot of A's, but here's the thing. It was thing. in French, I don't blame Okay, look, yeah. here's the thing. In order to get an A, you, gotta get, you must get a 90. If you get an 83, you don't get an A. I don't care what, what people say, you have, to, we got the rules, and the only rules we have are the total number of delegates. And then you go to the convention. And if you go in with a massive lead, you're likely to win. But if you can't convince the delegates that you can win in the fall, which n neither of them can do, and secondly, that they're not convinced you would be the best leader or president, what's wrong with the delegates on the second or third ballot saying, I'm going to pick somebody that I think would do better, who would win and be a better president? Here's, I don't get that. Look, I, I'm surrounded by all your supporters here. Well, but no, I want to ask this question. This is important. But, this question is important. Wait, you need to hear this. I, these are not my... I, I did a town hall here. And then we invited you. How many of you are voting for John Kasich? Okay. So then mostly your supporters. Well, but we didn't, we, did, I just, we just send out, we send out notifications, say we're going to have a town hall. People show up, whoever they are. I don't know. You know As somebody, I'm, I yeah. have taken the position, I'm never Hillary. You know the hashtag, never Hillary? Yeah, All right. yeah. So, me too. I know you are. I guess what I'm afraid of, and I'm, I'm thinking out loud here, for example, 34 delegates were awarded in Colorado this weekend. You didn't get one. Mm -hmm. Trump didn't get one. And it seems kind of unfair, like the establishment is kind of working. Well, look at what happened in Michigan. That was, there was a battle for delegates. You know, and um, aren't these and rules insane, well. though? Are, I mean, really, it's, it seems you can win a state and come out with less delegates. It seems like if if they want to, for a time, stop candidate A because they don't want that candidate to get to 1237, they'll yeah. use candidate B and C to stop candidate well, A. I, I, look, I'm not, I'm not engaged in that, but here's what I'll but tell you. But the establishment is. Oh, well, like, I don't know who they are. I've never well, I'll met I'll tell you them. who. Mitt Romney. Yeah, well. Carl Ro Wait a minute. Yeah. Carl Rove said we need a fresh face. Yeah. Uh, Scott Walker is looking for Paul Ryan. John Boehner in your home state said nominate Paul Ryan. Yeah, well, that Boehner said when he recouped he said well, I didn't that's not what I was saying but that's neither here nor there you know what's happening Sean said it. no what's happening is you have delegates who have minds and on the first ballot most of them are obligated to support who they got there with but look Cruz and Trump don't win in the fall in fact here's going to be the concern no here's going to be the concern 
we're not only going to lose the White House and the court, but we're going to lose the United States Senate. We're going to lose the courthouse, the state house. So when people look, I'm look, I'm beating Hillary virtually everywhere in the country. In New York, the last poll had me only five points behind. Why would a delegate who was there who wants to win in the fall not go after the first ballot and say, wait a minute, Kasich has been a success in what he's done in public life. He's put a good team together and he wins. Let Why me, would they not want final to go question. for me if I can win and beat Hillary? I don't get it. Fi final question. For the voters who waited online hours I know. to pull the lever for, for your opponents, for right. the, those that spent hours caucusing, my question is, let's say it works out the way you're, you are yeah. talking about here. How are you going to get those people that do feel disenfranchised to come along with you and unite everybody? Because you have to spend time with them, and that's what you do during the convention and even after the convention. Look, Sean, I was a young guy, and I found myself in charge of five states for Ronald Reagan. There was not a more bitter con contest than Reagan-Ford. And when we lost, we said, we're going for Ford, okay? The only reason for, reason Ford lost that election is he pardoned Nixon, but he did the country a giant favor. You just grow, you move on. And most of the people who are going to be there are not going to be people who are just going to storm out and walk out. They're mature people. There could be people here who will be a delegate. I'm worried about the people that vote on election day if they're going to show up. Because well, that would worry me. Look, I can tell you that I don't have any antipathy directed towards me by Trump voters. I don't know the Cruz voters as well. I just, they're not, I'm not, they're not dissatisfied with me. They just went for somebody else. So then you work to unite them with a big message, a big message of what we can do in this country. And look, I can tell you this, if these guys pick, get picked, look at their negatives. They're not going to win. If I get picked, we can win. I mean, I, I don't, it, la, I said last question, I have one more. All right, sorry. If they brought in somebody who hadn't run and they leapfrog over all of you, but that'll, that'll, I would be angry, wouldn't you? Well, look, it's going to be, you know what? I'm running for president. I'm in, I'm in Saratoga, New York. <laughs> I'm having the time of my life. Until I can. I know. All right, we'll take a break. We're done with that part. I could have started with it, but I wanted to no, make sure it's good. Right. We we'll take a break. We'll come it. back. More with Governor Casey. We'll get some audience questions. In. It's Hannity on the road. Yes, we're in Saratoga Springs, and we'll continue. Welcome back to Hannity. We're on the road in Saratoga Springs, New York, with Ohio Governor John Kasich for the full hour. All right, ready, lightning round. How long would it take you to balance the budget? We estimate it would be eight years, but I think it probably happened much sooner, five to six. But it wouldn't matter because once we had the plan in place, the economy would start working. Would you People support would cutting the size of government, meaning yeah, eliminating yeah, yeah. baseline budgeting? Oh, yeah, yeah. But here's the way you do it. You get a cab that you say, I want you to give me a budget that represents 90 percent of what you had last mm -hmm. year, 95 percent of what you had last year, and you bring and give that to me. Is That's the penny it. plan a good idea? Yeah, cut you a like penny that? out of okay. it. I've got to do a lot more how, than that. How soon could you make this country energy independent? Oh, I think that's around the corner. We just, yeah. I mean, in New York, they ought to learn how to get their resources out of the ground. We're doing it in Ohio. Sure. All right. Um, your, a lot of people, especially here in upstate New York. You well, know, let me go back to the first question, because okay. here's the thing. Once you have a plan that begins to freeze federal regs for some period of time, you begin to drive these tax cuts, particularly the corporate tax cuts, so people will invest in America, and you have a path to a balanced budget. If you ask the small business people here, they'll tell you if they were certain of that, they'd start working. You, so you get the economic activity a lot faster than when you get to the final. Are New York's restrictive gun laws unconstitutional in your mind? No, I don't know. No. I, are they unconstitutional? Yeah. No, I, I believe in the Second Amendment, and when you violate it, that's wrong. And that's why, I mean, that's yeah. just, you don't do that. I'm a Second Amendment guy. It, you're pro-life? Yep. Okay. You're pro-religious freedom? Yeah, well, it depends what Should that the little means. sisters of the poor be no, forced? No, they should. No, no. okay. What kind of, who are your two favorite justices on the Supreme Court? Well, I mean, I, my favorite, of course, is the man we just lost. Yeah. He was by, far and away my favorite justice. Okay. Okay. I also like Clarence Thomas. You yeah. like I like Clarence. And you would appoint originalist justices? Oh, I appoint over 100 now in Ohio, and yeah. the first question is, are they conservative? Right. 
Okay, and that's and they they've all and I I pointed a woman to the Ohio Supreme Court. She's fantastic, conservative, common sense. Yeah, of course you you want you is, don't want judges making law. You want them is interpreting ISIS the law. and radical Islam evil in our time? The worst. It's one of the worst things we've ever seen in history. Mm -hmm. So what do you have to do? You got to get those Arab Muslim countries that we had in the first Gulf War. We kicked out Saddam. That means Egypt. Uh, it means uh, Saudi Arabia, it means uh, Jordan, it means the Gulf states. You got to get Western Europe, you go in the air, on the ground, you destroy ISIS, destroy them. When it settles down, when it settles down, you then leave, let them draw the map in the Middle East. And then we need, I mean, America, look, I wouldn't have gone to a baseball game with Castro. I would have flown home after Brussels. I then would have, let me, let me you, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't do the tango? No, I would have come home, I would have met with my military and intelligence officials, called all the leaders in Europe, sent my team to Europe, discussed our vulnerabilities, fixed them, because what we need is the civilized world, all of the civilized world against these barbarians. These are a cult of death, and what amazes me, Sean, is how can these people sit in an apartment in Europe and plan to take a bomb to an airport and kill our families? We know. have to destroy those people, and here at home, here at home, here at home, joint terrorism task forces, that's why the Apple thing got resolved, it appears as though it did, our joint terrorism task force, FBI, uh, Homeland Security, state and local law enforcement, they should disrupt. We have a job, when we see crazy things happening, we have to tell law enforcement, and then finally, just because we would work, for By example... By the way, that's not a lightning round, but go ahead. <laughs> Well, you're talking about, look, I know, on, it's evil on, in our time. on it's national too security, yeah. on national security, I spent 18 years on the committee. I went all the way from the fall of the Berlin Wall to kicking Saddam uh, out of Kuwait, all the way to being in the Pentagon after 9-11. I've seen all this, and I know how it works and last, what to do. Last lightning round question, then we're going to get to audience questions. Three names at the top of your list for vice president. Derek Jeter. <laughs> Henrik Lundqvist. All right, go ahead. Who else? Three, three serious names. No, I, I, it's too early to measure the drapes. I, I will come back with that later, but I'll tell you what you need. No, here's what you need. You need a vice president who will argue with you, but who is your partner? You need, I've already picked a vice president. You know, I picked a lieutenant governor. See, I've already made a selection like this. Somebody mm -hmm. that got my agenda, somebody who would go out and promote, promote my, my values, or not my values so much, but my policies. That's what you do, not just for a vice president, but the entire cabinet. You, you have to have the entire cabinet and the vice president all rowing in the Please. same direction with a goal of being a job creating a country and you take a break. manage the budget. We'll come we back. Get to questions. When we get I'm back, sorry, audience sorry. questions straight ahead. Welcome back to Saratoga Springs in beautiful New York, Ohio Governor John Kasich is with us. All right, we got first time caller, long time listener, what's your name, sir? Hi, Governor and uh, Mr. Cheney, thank you uh, for visiting us here in Saratoga Springs. My name is Stephen Lutman. Uh, Governor Kasich, under a Kasich presidency, what specific steps would you take to help small business, uh, especially here in New York, a highly taxed state? Well, look, I mean, I, first of all, I believe that we need to bring the top rates down I use the old Reagan plan, 28, 25, 10 percent with a capital gains rate of 15. But here in New York, you just, I mean, if it wasn't New York, you wouldn't have any jobs. It's just that New York's got a certain magic to it. In our state, we don't, our, our uh, small businesses don't pay any income tax. Can you believe that? Wow. But what I would do, <laughs> as president, I would bring down the top you because Derek. Derek.
Republicans about Niskayuna High School. And um, what is one message you'd like to convey to high school voters? Great question. Well, look, I mean, the most important thing is for you five to realize that you've been made special. There's nobody ever been like you before, and there'll never be anybody like you again. And you have a purpose. Realize that yourself and changing the world where you live, that's your purpose in life. That's where you're going to find satisfaction. So I want you to have big hopes, big dreams, lots of confidence in yourself, because you're the generation that we're counting on to, to continue to improve our country. Number two, we're going to create an economy where you can realize your God-given purpose through some of the work that you're going to do. It's really, really important. And I'm going to give you another tip. When you go back to school tomorrow, you meet with your guidance counselor. And you say to your guidance counselor, these are the things I'm trying to do. This is what I might want to be. Tell me, are those jobs out there? And secondly, how do I get one? Okay? We need to train our young people with the skills they need. All right, girls, uh, thank you. If I can add one little piece, and don't date any boys. None. <laughs> They're all horrible. Uh, all right, real quick, one last question, and we only have about a minute. you got to really hurry as we turn it out. Hi, how are you? Good evening, Governor. I'm Karen Majanowski from Clifton Park, New York, and my question is, what steps will you take to handle the nation's current immigration situation? Well, look, we've got to finish the border for sure, okay? And then anybody who tries to come in has to go back. No excuses, no debate. Have a guest worker program where people can come in and go home. And finally, for those that are here, they can have a path to legalization if they have not committed a crime since they've been here, pay back taxes, a fine. Uh, but never a path to citizenship, but a path to legalization. And I think we can get this issue behind us quickly. I believe that. Okay? Governor, we got 30 seconds. Your final word to the crowd. Well, look, the spirit of our country rests in us, not in politicians, not in the government. It rests in us and our families, our neighborhoods and communities. And you're going to have the tools, if I'm president, to do the things you need to do here. Change the world. Believe it. You can get it done. And America is going to rise for us, for our children and our grandchildren. God bless you. And thank you very much. Governor, thank you. We appreciate it. When we come back, final moments as we continue from Saratoga Springs. We're in upstate New York as Hannity continues. Thank you. Appreciate it. Governor John Casey. Thank you.